Every time I talk about Affinity Photo for the iPad, I get a lot of the same questions. Namely, Jeff, what's so special about Affinity Photo? Why do you like this app so much? Why are you always talking about it? Why are you always big upping it? Well, the reason is, is because it is one of the most powerful apps that I've ever used on the iPad. And I'm hoping that this video shows you some of what this app is capable of, and maybe it'll convince you that this is an app that you need to have in your repertoire. So check it out right now. The first thing that you wanna do if you're new to Affinity Photo on the iPad is to take advantage of the excellent help resources. And you can access the help system by tapping the question mark in the upper right hand corner. That will reveal all the different help articles. So you have some of the featured topics here. You have some support forms you can go to, but here on the left side, you have a whole host of different help sections that you can uh, really learn a lot of the ins and outs of the program using. So just tap on one of the sections you're interested in, and then you can also search as well. So if you're searching for something in particular, such as text, just type in that word, and that will allow you to find all of the text related help articles within the help section. But it doesn't stop there. You can also access tool tips within a document. So all you need to do is press and hold on the question mark in the bottom right hand corner and you get all the tool tips telling you what everything does within the app, which is super handy. But again, it doesn't stop there. There's also very nice in-depth video tutorials that you can access directly from the main screen. So you see quite a few different video, video tutorials that will walk you through how to use different features in the app. There are also sample photos that you can go in and edit. Uh, and you can learn a lot about the app in general just by looking at the way these photos are composed. For instance, if you open up the layers, you can see all the different layers and how they went about compositing that. Now you can also go in and disable the various tutorials and samples that are featured at the bottom of the main portion of the app. So just go into the settings and then disable show tutorials and samples and then click close and now you can see it's gone. Now as far as keyboard shortcuts are concerned, unfortunately Affinity Photo does not have that little feature where you can hold the command key on your keyboard to view all the eligible shortcuts. But what you can do is you can go into the help section, type in keyboard and access a list. This isn't a full list, but it gives you a partial list of some of the available keyboard shortcuts. Now in Affinity Photo, you can create a project which is comprised of one or more individual documents. So a project basically is a folder that houses multiple documents. So when you create a new project, you can name that project and then you can simply drag and drop individual documents in that project, or you can just create a new document while in that project. So basically it just helps you stay organized. Now you can import documents from the Mac version of Affinity Photo by saving them to the cloud while on the Mac and then simply importing them into Affinity Photo on iPad. Now you have the option of opening from the cloud or importing from the cloud. And the difference is if you open from the cloud, the changes that you save will save back to the cloud. So in this case, if I close this document and I tap yes here, and then I reopen that document from the cloud, the changes that I save to the cloud will be there. So let me just show you right here. So I'm gonna tap on that document and you should, yep, you can see the changes are there because they were saved to the cloud. Now one of the cool things about the Affinity Photo Canvas is that the UI elements will automatically hide as you're using the app and as you get close to the borders. Let me show you what I mean. So if I'm drawing here and I get close to the border, you can see how the UI elements just hide out of the way so that I can continue drawing uninterrupted. Pretty cool, but you can also hide manually by tapping the hide UI button and that will keep them out of the way until you bring them back. Just like that. Affinity Photo refers to the tools used to modify elements on the canvas as studios. And you can access those studios on the right hand side of the app. But you can also pin those studios using the pin button and they will stay available as you manipulate the items on the canvas like that. Affinity Photo includes some really nice undo and redo options. The first of such you can find in the settings under the general tab. You can actually change the undo limit from 8 to 2048. So <laughs> plenty of undo for even the largest of projects I would say. 
Now when it's time to undo or redo changes, all you need to do is utilize the buttons in the bottom right hand corner. The one pointing left will undo like this. And the one pointing to the right will redo like that. Simple. Now if you're looking for a little more fine grain control, then try accessing the undo history by means of the undo studio, which is right here. And now you can see the full undo history so you can actually tap and go directly to a previous or post change just like this. You can even utilize the little slider at the bottom of the list to simply slide and just pan through all the changes just like that. Very, very handy. Unfortunately, Affinity Photo does not support split view, but you can still slide over and drag and drop images from another application thanks to iOS 11. So just simply drag and drop directly onto the canvas like that and you're ready to start working. Now, you can also drag and drop into a new document. So I can take this image and create a new document based on that image simply by dragging and dropping directly into the organizer. And then you can tap on that image to load it up and start working on it. You can quickly zoom to fit using a two finger tap. So if you zoom way in like this, you're working on something and you two finger tap, you can quickly get in and out of the zoom. Now it's no secret that Affinity Photo has lots of tools and some of those tools are actually hidden beneath other tools. To access those secondary tools, simply tap the button a second time once you already have it selected. Now any advanced photo editing app is going to have layers and you can access the layers studio beneath the hide UI button in the upper right hand corner. And just like Photoshop, you can group layers, you can rearrange layers, you can activate and deactivate layers, you can rename those layers, etc., etc. It goes way deeper than that. A very instrumental part of the app. Now the color picker is a handy tool that's easy to use. Simply select it in the toolbar and then tap and drag on the canvas. Once you find a color that you like, release and you can see that the selected item will change colors. And you could take it further with the color wheel which has a plethora of color related options. Of course you have the main color wheel. So you could just drag like that. This is the color studio of course. And then you could change how light or how dark that particular color is. You can change the opacity. You can even create your own custom swatches or select from pre-existing swatches. There's just a lot there within the Color Studio. And I highly recommend checking out the help section of the app for more information on color manipulation. Snapping makes it so much easier to properly compose your images on the canvas. Let me show you what I mean. So right now, snapping is not enabled but let's enable it right now and I'll show you why it's so helpful. So tap snapping, enable snapping, tap done. And now notice what you see when you get to the middle of the canvas, you can see the horizontal or the Y axis and X axis snapping. So it allows you to easily align objects to certain important points within the canvas, such as the center, and other key points like the edges of other items on the same canvas. So for example, in this demonstration, I can align the edges of these two squares perfectly. Rotating can be done in several ways. You can rotate the canvas by selecting the rotate canvas tool and just use rotation like that. Or you can rotate individual items. You can rotate using the little handle here on the bounding box. And as you get closer to the item, you can spin faster at the expense of accuracy. But if you're further away, it spins slower, but it's more accurate. Now you can also go into the transform studio right here, and you can change up the anchor points and rotate on those particular points. So I could select the middle and rotate on the middle anchor, or I can select one of the edges or corners and rotate on the corner anchor. Now the sliders within Affinity Photo are handy, but sometimes you just need to enter an exact value. To do so, simply tap on the number and that'll bring up this little pop-up, which allows you to enter an exact value. 
There are multiple ways to add text. The first easy way is to simply tap on the art text tool, tap on the canvas and start typing, right? And you can go in and manipulate that using the inspector below. So you can go in and change up the point value, change up the font if you wanna do that. Whatever the case may be, it makes it super easy. There's also a second way that you can go about inserting text. If you know how big you want the point value to be, you simply tap and drag. So that way you can get an exact value and just start typing based on that value. So a quick shortcut when you know exactly how big you want the text to be. And you can change that up, of course, after the fact. Now having fine grained control over character position is super important when it comes to composing good looking text. So go into the text studio and select the position section and that will allow you to adjust the text positioning. So you can change things like kerning value, shear value, tracking value, etc. There's just so many different things you can change up here to make the text look exactly like you want it to look. And speaking of text, the latest version of Affinity Photo now has custom font support. You can access that via the settings and tapping on the fonts tab. And there you can add your own custom fonts directly from the cloud. It should come as no surprise that Affinity Photo has an effects studio as well, containing things like blur, shadow, glow, and you could easily toggle these on or off using the switches and then tap on a particular effect and then access all of the inspector settings below. So with shadow, I can adjust the radius, the offset, the intensity, the opacity, the color, the angle. Folks, we're working with a desktop class app on the iPad, no doubt. Selections are so important in Affinity Photo that they have their own dedicated persona and you can access that in the upper left-hand corner. So if I tap my help button, you can see all the various tools that are revealed when you switch to that persona. I'm gonna use the polygon tool to quickly cut out this image. And it's gonna be a really rough cutout because I'm just trying to show you an example, a for example. So don't judge my cutting skills, folks, please. All right, so we're almost done. I obviously sped this up just a little bit. All right, so we have our selection. Now we're going to invert that selection like that and now we'll cut it out like that. So now I just have the foreground image. I wanna change up the layers a bit and drag and drop a background and they're just like that. Obviously a little rough around the edges, literally, but you get the point. You see how powerful the tools within the selections persona can be. Aligning objects on the canvas is a very instrumental part of the editing process. And I'm gonna show you how to use alignments within Affinity Photo. So I have multiple objects selected. I go to the Transform Studio, select alignments, and there you can see you can align vertically, you can align horizontally, and I have these two objects selected and they align to themselves. And then our final tip, how to export directly to a share location. So. If you select the export option, the really cool thing about Affinity Photo is that there are tons of different export options and you can save those to the cloud if you wish. But one of the cool features is this little share button in the bottom left hand corner. If you tap that, you can use things like AirDrop to just quickly get that finished product over to your other device like your Mac or your iPhone or whatever the case may be, just like that. So ladies and gentlemen, needless to say, I highly recommend Affinity Photo. These have been just a few of the basic tips and tricks that you can use to get started with this excellent iPad tool. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.